Now we'll discuss the derivative. The derivative has a twofold interpretation. First, it is a slope of a tangent line to the graph of the function at a specific point. Or it can be interpreted as the rate of change. Here is how we define the derivative of a function. If we have a function in general, y equals f of x, then the derivative of y with respect to x, okay, so dy over dx is read as the derivative of y with respect to x, is equal to the limit of the function f of x plus delta x minus f of x all over delta x as delta x approaches zero, provided that the limit exists. Let me just explain to you how this definition is interpreted as the slope of the line tangent to the graph of the function at a specific point. Let us first recall the formula in finding the slope of a line. m is equal to rise over run. Okay, or it's delta y over delta x. So if you want to find the slope of this line that I'll be drawing, say this line is passing through two points P1 and P2 with the corresponding coordinates x sub 1, y sub 1 for P1 and then x sub 2, y sub 2 for P2. So using the formula in finding the slope of a line, the slope of that particular line is equal to delta, delta y is y sub 2 minus y sub 1 the change in the vertical length of the line over delta x, the change in the horizontal length of the line, x sub 2 minus x sub 1. So this is our formula in finding the slope of that particular line. Now let me relate this definition, this definition of the derivative of the function to the slope of a line. Say we're given the graph of a function f shown in the figure. Say we have two points on the graph. Let's call these points points P and Q. Points P and Q have their corresponding coordinates. Now if I connect the points P and Q then I would have a second line to the graph of the function. All right, that yellow line is a secant line, okay, passing through two points on the graph of the function. Okay, uh, remember we are trying to relate the slope of the tangent line to the definition of the derivative of the function. Okay. Now let me just label the graph. Take note that this is x sub 1, no, x in the graph, and this is x sub 1. Okay, so if the blue curve is the graph of the function y equals f of x, then for whenever x is equal to these values, this values, then there will be corresponding values for the function. So this would be f of x. And then this number on the y-axis is f of x sub 1. Okay. So in the figure, this is delta x. And then this is delta y. Okay. So the yellow line has a slope. The slope of that yellow line, which is actually a secant line, is given by this formula. So rise over run, it's delta y over delta x, where delta y is f of x sub 1 minus f of x. Okay. And then over delta x, where delta x is obviously from the figure x sub 1 minus x. So delta x is actually x sub 1 minus x. Okay. Transposing x to the left side will get delta x plus x, or x plus delta x is equal to x sub 1, All right? So the slope of the secant line 
is actually equal to f of x sub 1, but then x sub 1 is x plus delta x minus f of x. Right over x sub 1 minus x is delta x. This is the slope of the secant line to the graph of the function given. Now, as in the graph, looking looking at the graph again, if we move q closer and closer to p, what happens to delta x? Again, as q moves closer and closer to p, what happens to delta x? Delta x approaches 0, right? This in the figure, this, look at the figure, delta x comes closer and closer to the value 0 as q goes closer and closer to p. And so graphically, what happens to the secant line as q goes closer to p? The secant line becomes almost a tangent line. That happens when q is very, very close to p. And so the limiting position of the secant line is actually a tangent line. And that happens when q is now very, very close to point P. And again, as Q goes closer and closer to P, delta X approaches zero. And also, as delta X approaches zero, the secant line becomes a tangent line. So the slope of the tangent line now is the limit of the slope of the secant line, where the slope is F of X plus delta X minus f of x over delta x as delta x approaches zero. And as you can see, this is the very definition of the derivative, which is also equal to the slope of the tangent line to the graph of the function at, at the point p. Now, the process of finding the derivative of a function is called differentiation. When we differentiate a function, we get the slope of all the tangent lines to the graph of the function. So what we'll get upon differentiating a function is the slope of the tangent line in general. So that's the slope of all the tangent lines to the graph of the function. Now this process requires uh, memorization of uh, several formulas. Let me give you the first uh, set of differentiation formulas. Now let me suggest that you write all the differentiation formulas that I'm going to give you in the future in, um, in an index card. Write it on an index card or on a page of your notebook. Do that so that uh, whenever you need a differentiation formula, you'll not go through all the pages of your notebook for it. All right, so here's differentiation formula number one. I'll call it D sub one for differentiation formula number one. This is for the derivative of a constant. The derivative of a constant with respect to any variable is equal to zero. Okay, that is for all constants. Formula number two. The derivative of x raised to n, that's the power of x with respect to x, is equal to n times x raised to n minus 1. We call this the power rule. Third formula is for the sum and difference of two or more functions. So the derivative of a function of x plus or minus a function, another function of x with respect to x, of course, is equal to the sum or difference of the derivatives of the two functions. So we can take the derivative of f of x okay, with respect to x and then add or subtract from that uh, the derivative of the other function of x, g of x. So it means to say that we can either add or subtract two functions first before we differentiate with respect to x or we can 
take the derivative of each of the functions first and then add or subtract the, deriv the two derivatives. Differentiation formula number four. Now starting from formula four, uh, we will not be writing the over dx anymore. So let u and v be functions. So we can generalize the formulas. We can al always differentiate with respect to any variable, not just x. Where x here, of course, is the independent variable of the function. You can always differentiate with respect to any variable. So if u and b are functions, then the derivative of the product of u and v, so d of u times v is equal to u times dv plus v times du. Okay, this is called the product rule. Okay, because this is used whenever you are differentiating the product of two functions. So if u and v are in terms of x, then we will be taking the derivative of u times b with respect to x. But if u and v are in terms of other variables like y, like z, t, or any other variables, then we will be differentiating with respect to the other variables like y, z, and t. Take note that in the product rule, dv means derivative of v, of v, and then du means derivative of u. Okay, so that we are clear. And then the fifth formula for differentiation is called the quotient rule. Still, u and v are functions of any variable. The derivative of the quotient of u and v is equal to v times du minus u times dv all over v squared. And again, we call this the quotient rule because we use this formula whenever we are differentiating the quotient of two functions. So this is the first set of differentiation formulas that you have to memorize. All right, so now let us apply these formulas in the examples. Oh wait, but before we proceed to the examples, let me just uh, show you the different notations for the derivative of the function. So you already know that dy over dx is read as the derivative of y with respect to x and is the same when we say y prime. So when we say y prime or we write y prime, y prime will always mean dy over dx. Well, conventionally, y prime is the same as dy over dx. Now, if the function uses the notation f of x, then we can also use for the derivative of f of x, the notation f prime of x. So f prime of x is read as the derivative of f of x. Of course, you can always use other letters such as g of x, h of x. So we can always use g prime of x for the derivative of g of x, h prime of x for the derivative of h of x, and so on. Sometimes cap capital D is also being used for the derivative, but we seldom use that uh, notation, capital D, with subscript, say, x, which means the derivative with respect to x. Okay, now we proceed to the examples. In the following examples, we need to differentiate uh, the following functions with respect to the corresponding independent variables. Of course, the independent variables may be other letters aside from x. So in that case, we will be differentiating with respect to the other variables. Okay, If ever the function is given in terms of other variables. Let's apply the differentiation formula number one. If we have a function, a constant function, f of x equals 5. Okay, differentiating f of x, which is a constant function, with respect to x, the notation for the derivative of f of x is f prime of x. As shown in d1, the derivative of any constant is 0, so the derivative of 5 is 0. Okay, if we have another constant function, written as y equals, let's say, negative 10, 
Then the derivative of y denoted by y prime, okay, derivative of y with respect to x that is, denoted by y prime is equal to zero. Okay, this is the derivatives of the two constant functions. Okay, so this is the derivative of f of x in example number one. This is the derivative of y equals negative 10 in example number 2. So the derivatives of the two constant functions. All right, applying the power rule in example number 3, say given g of x equals x cubed, what is the derivative of g? So it's denoted by g prime of x. Using the power rule, look at the formula. So we bring whatever the exponent of x is, we bring it down beside x. So it's 3. Okay, look at the power rule. Bring down the exponent, copy x, and then subtract 1 from the exponent, 3 minus 1. So g prime of x, when simplified, is 3x squared. This is the derivative of the function. Let's repeat that process. Let's say h of x is equal to x to the fifth. What is the derivative of h of x? Denoted by h prime of x. Again, applying the power rule, you bring down the exponent. Copy the base. Subtract 1 from the exponent. So h prime of x is equal to 5 x to the fourth. This is the derivative of the function. Now, if we have the sum of two functions, let's say y is equal to x to the fourth, okay, plus, let's have plus 3. What is the derivative of y with respect to x? So it can be denoted by y prime or dy over dx. It's up to you how you want to write the derivative of the function. Now, we can have the derivative of x to the fourth, okay, and add to that the derivative of 3. So the derivative of the first term using power rule, okay, again, power rule, bring down the exponent, copy the base, subtract 1 from the exponent, and plus the derivative of the constant 3. According to d1, the derivative of 3 is 0. So dy over dx, or the derivative of y with respect to x, is equal to 4x cubed. This is the derivative of the function. Note that from the power rule, the derivative of x with respect to itself is equal to 1. That goes for all independent variables. So the derivative of y with respect to itself is also 1. The derivative of z with respect to z is also equal to 1 using the power rule. Let's say y is equal to x, then y prime using the power rule. Remember that the exponent of x is 1. So bring down the exponent, copy the base and then subtract 1 from the exponent. 1 minus 1 is equal to 0, so that will give us 1 times x raised to 0, while x raised to 0 is equal to 1. So the answer is 1, that is y prime. So the derivative of the independent variable with respect to itself is always 1, no matter what the independent variable is in the function. Now let us apply the product rule in the next example. Say we have y equals 3x to the fourth. Okay, so this is the product of 3 and x to the fourth. So applying the product rule to get y prime. So this is u and this is v. So we have u equals 3 and v is equal to x to the fourth. Okay, so we have u as a constant function and v is a power of x. Looking at the product rule, so the derivative of uv or u times v is equal to u times dv where dv is the derivative of v okay, plus v times du where du is the derivative of u. So, if you have u equals 3, what is du equal to? What is the derivative of 3? According to d1, the derivative of any constant is 0. And then what is dv equal to? 
according to the second formula, the power rule, it's 4 x raised to 3. So bring down 4, copy the base, and then subtract 1 from the exponent. So dv is equal to 4 x cubed. So therefore, y prime, according to the product rule, is u, so u is equal to 3, times dv, where dv is 4 x cubed, plus v, what is v again? x to the fourth times du. What is du equal to zero? And so when we simplify, y prime is equal to three times four, that is 12 x cubed. And then the second term would be zero because x to the fourth multiplied by zero is zero. So this is the derivative of the function. All right, note that in general, if we want the derivative of a constant times a function u, okay, that is just equal to the constant times the derivative of u, just like in example number 6. So in example number 6, y is equal to 3x to the fourth. So it's a constant times a function. So if you want to get y prime, you can just set aside the constant, copy the constant, and just take the derivative of the function u. So where u is a power of x, so the derivative of x to the fourth according to the power rule is 4x cubed. So y prime, when we simplify, is still 12x cubed. So we don't have to use the product rule anymore. Okay, because anyway, in the product rule, look at this, du is just equal to zero. So the second term would be eliminated always whenever you have the product of a constant and a function. Let me continue in the next video.